Dave Rankin is the former number one top ranking assassin worldwide, but since he became a crime boss, he had to relinquish the position due to the fact that crime bosses aren't allowed to carry their own execution. Something of a mafioso tradition, and in all honesty, this wasn't pleasing to Dave Rankin. He had no chance but to obey and succumb to tradition. Apart from being the best, or should I say, was the best, he never stops talking or flaunting his past in people's faces by talking about himself all day, his success as an assassin and how he had to relinquish his position as the best of the best of hitmen and as a crime boss, how he led his crime family to number two and in all honesty, Dave Rankin was the best in which he considers himself the Michael Jordan of professional hitmen, the Michelangelo of killers, the Vilvadi of assassins, the Kilimanjaro of shooters, the reincarnation of Sahan Sahan, even though he isn't dead, the Mount Everest of contract killers. And as a crime boss, someone was after his life and he doesn't know who. And those he suspected were after his life were the wrong perpetrators. In fact, one of his captured victims was killed right in front of him and he realized his hideout wasn't safe. He decided to vacate and leave but was met with a surprise when his car exploded and he lost some of his men. In fear of his life, Dave Rankin decided to host an assassin get together like a party well hoping things will go down well among those lots and the invitees were the top 20 assassins worldwide and maxwell bishop was there standing at the entrance he was surprised that all the guests were urged not to bring their guns inside the party for everyone's safety as if that's going to help things you know we are talking of assassins and not just any assassins but top 20 contract killers worldwide getting the attention of dave rankin who was about to join his his guests made it known to Maxwell Bishop that he bear him no grudge for taking his number one spot when he retired to become a crime boss. As usual, Dave Rankin couldn't help himself, reminiscing about the heydays, how he was the best at what he does, the god of contract killers, that he felt like a god. In fact, when he was married, all he could ever think about was killing the hunt. He was like a retired vampire. As for Maxwell Bishop, he wasn't bothered about the past for he left that life to be with his lover and all he could talk about was his lover. In all honesty, Dave Rankin wasn't impressed with that answer. But on the other side of things, the main reason Maxwell Bishop accepted this invitation even though he was retired was because his lover was killed and he believes and trusts his instinct that the killer was one of the top 20 contract killers attending Dave's assassins get together. The room was filled with cream de la cream of assassins. It was like a summit of contract killers, the meanest of the meanest. And if you don't mind me bastardizing the English language, I mean, these were the baddest of the baddest. They were all here. And trust me, they seem friendly. But these were nothing but sons and daughters of bitches. From Nile Roosevelt Axelrod to Chad Fingerman to Smoke, the youngest of the pack, to Wistful Stan, who doesn't know what is going on? And to Desert Regal, to Tanaka, to Winter Green to Frank Townhouse to Red Scorpion to Tank to Midstick to Smoosh Walker to Connie the Tank to the Mamba Twins to David Bowie Knife to El Sicario to Rumble Deathmatch to Dave. Then finally, somebody's first name I wouldn't want to fully pronounce, F. Tackington. What a first name. And, and trust me, as cordial as everyone seems to be with the other, this was a room sitting on a keg of gunpowder. And hey, here comes Fernando, the number one contract killer in the world. An arrogant prick who likes to make an entrance, for he, like Dave Rankin, was a show-off. Explaining himself to his guests why they were invited to his party, he went on to let them know that someone was after his life and this individual had tried ending his life three times for the greatest idea that came to mind to keep him safer was to hire all the 20 of them since his security detail was compromised and in jeopardy and what better way in protecting oneself from a hitman than to hire hitmen as his security details but he got a surprise of his life as some of his guests had 
had a contract on his head. And before they began shooting at him, he promised whoever to save him that he will double the fee on his head. Without recompense, the room went up in flames into a frenzy as Fingerman died and pushed David Rankin to the floor to save him from bullet shots. And the shooting began. And Maxwell Bishop didn't hold back. From neck cracking to gun shooting to body flying to table smashing, it was a bullet galore. Fingerman didn't hold back either as he shot at anyone who tried to kill Dave Rankin. Fernando showed why he was number one, but his cockiness got the better of him as the youngest of the assassins, Smoke, blew his brains out of his skull and showed the remainder of the assassins left alive that there was a contract on Fernando's head. Excited and jubilant with full-blown orgasm, Dave Rankin asked the rest of the assassins who was ready to work for him.